So here is the next challenge. Um, you've all experienced uh, this effect, I'm sure, of having using polarized sunglasses, maybe, to reduce the glare, etc. Because um, you know, dust reflections basically polarize light, and you can avoid some of the haze from dust by using polarizing sunglasses. Well, there's a lot of dust in the Milky Way, and that polarizes light too, and the microwave background in particular. But there's something else also that polarizes the microwave background, and that's really quite amazing. That is, the initial beginning of the universe, um, which the theory which tells us how big the universe is, the theory which fits these fluctuations amazingly well, all beginning from this very simple initial condition of one number, one strength of the fluctuations. That's called the inflation theory. Um, and that takes us back to some incredibly early moment of the universe. But what it also does is it predicts the universe, because it expanded so rapidly, should be jostled around a bit. And the microwave background, uh, this jostling should leave gravity waves behind. That's an effect of bits of matter moving around in random ways, which when the radiation last scatters to us, give you a very, very slight polarization of the radiation field. And so if we could ever measure this polarization, this twisting of the radiation, we could actually infer something. We could see the very, very big of the universe. So it's an incredibly powerful concept. Can we actually get back that far? OK, um, so it's a tough thing to do because this is what we measure at the moment. We've been looking hard for polarization, and the, the data's coming in. And, and this is the polarization from dust, essentially, and also from, from the effect of of lens of gravity, you know, bending light a bit. We call that lensing. But the primordial signal is way, way down here. This is the twisting signal that comes from the gravity waves from the beginning of the universe. That's what we expect to see. And it's down by some huge factor in sensitivity um, by, you know, instead of dealing with milli-degrees Kelvin, we now have to deal with nano-degrees nano Kelvin. You know, 100,000 or a million more sensitive is needed, okay? A very tough challenge, but we can think of this as being the holy grail of modern cosmology, and there's a huge race on around the world to try to find this effect, because it really would be taking us back, not from 400,000 years after the Big Bang, that's when the reaction comes to us, but back to the first incredible fraction of a second after the Big Bang. It will be a proof that that actually occurred, which is an amazing concept. The only, the only way to see it, because only gravity waves can travel freely um, from the beginning, they, they don't interact much with matter at all, and imprint the changing gravity field on the microwave photons that we see. OK, so that's the story. Um, and so early last year, um, one very uh, brave experiment uh, called BICEP2 um, based at the South Pole, we have to go to strange places in astronomy to build these telescopes, um, thought they found um, this elusive signal. Okay. Um, and um, they um, uh, produced this map, which of this patch of the sky they looked at, which they said showed this highly elusive signal. And, and this, again, um, this is in units of nano Kelvin, billionths of a degree Kelvin, the, the sensitivity scale. It's incredible. Um, OK. However, they made the press announcement, press release, gave out the information, and of course everyone in the world w wanted to check their result. And it emerged that they were wrong. They were seeing dust, unfortunately. It was very unfortunate. And so from the pa Planck satellite, um, it turns out that they were looking at a region of the sky, um, which is basically where there's a, just a strong dust signal. And, and so it turns out that the dark blue are better bits of the sky to look at, fairly free of dust contamination. And they were just unlucky. They chose a patch of sky they thought was clear from ordinary data, optical data, whatever, but they had not, they didn't have the Planck satellite to tell them. So the dust story is quite amazing. So now the Planck satellite has produced these amazing pictures of the dust in the galaxy, giving you polarization effects. Okay, and uh, you know these could be Van Gogh paintings, right? So it's um, dust is basically everywhere, um, and if you look at the um, this is the, the Milky Way itself, and but you see dust far above the Milky Way too, and all this would contaminate your signal and stop you seeing the beginning that you want to get to, right? And so this is the whole the whole sky, and you can see it's it's everywhere. Okay.